This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and the lovely Holly Christina sitting with me back again this week. Yes, finally. Yes. Feels like forever. I know, right? It's like, ah! And since last week, last week on the show I mentioned that uh, Misha was, she was going to be taking some time off. Well, between then and now, it changed, and now she's basically said, you know, she is not able to do the show due to health reasons. Um, not going to go into that. Um, I think she's mentioned on her personal spaces or what have you. If you follow her, then then you know she goes into a little bit more detail. Um, but that's not for me to go into here, <laughs> except for health reasons. That's all. And we and I respect that, and certainly wish her all the best. It was great having her when she was on. But the show must go on. So these next few shows, however many people we get interested, it's going to be kind of audition shows for a new third person to sit in. And this week, our our, our, first, our first audition like person is uh, Danny Amigurumi. Hello, Danny. Hi. Yes, we've had her on the show before. Uh, so I put the audition call out there, and she she's like, oh 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 me 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 me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, well, well, you know, we will definitely give her a shot. See what you guys think, you know, when it's just the three of us. Oh, and of course, I, I had to choose because because uh, uh, I think I mentioned last week um, when Bex was on, uh, there, there were two articles. I know I mentioned it to her off mic. I don't remember if I mentioned it on the air. But there were two Return of Kings articles that I wanted to go over. This one this week I really wanted to save because it's kind of a follow-up to a couple of things we did. And by the way, because I'm starting to note it myself, next week I will not do a Return of Kings article. God damn it. <laughs> Although I will note something very interesting that happened. Um, when we, when Omega and I did Thespian Talk earlier this week, uh, we learned that Fred Phelps had been – you know, he was on his deathbed. Well, right before we started recording this, Fred Phelps died. I saw that on Twitter. Yeah, and I, I am I am amazed at just how much I'm just kind of apathetic to him. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, Hagen put it best. He was a complicated man. You know, he did some good, then he did some bullshit. And it's just, it's very complicated and partially because of all that i'm just kind of left as at an average of meh you know i mean feel bad for those that care about him you know condolences go to them and etc 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 but that's about as far as it extends for me i mean i, I don't know how it extends for either of you I'm yeah about the same. you know i feel bad for the people who cared about him and you know his family but it you know people die and uh, you know, it's not like I knew him. He, you know, wasn't the best guy around. So, yeah, that's, there, that's life. Oh yeah, if there are people that are wanting to pick at his funeral. See, that's that drives me nuts. Yeah, I am. I am honestly, I, I can see on both sides on this one because on the one hand, yes, I I, I can agree with you, Holly. That that's that's kind of not cool because you can be the better person. You know, and, and and show, yeah, you know what? We hated the fuck out of you, but we're not going to pick at your funeral because we're better than you, or because we have a, a conscience. You know, we're going we're going to give you your grieving time for him, and not bother you. You know, that's that's the one hand. On the other hand, that I see, I can see where the people are coming from. They're like, how well, how does it feel, motherfuckers? How does it feel? You know, that that's 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 where I can see both ends. I don't necessarily agree or want to go with the whole you know how does it feel but i can certainly understand why yeah but there's really no winning in that kind of situation yeah because like then what happens you pick it and they're going to be like well see you got all up in our face for doing it and now you're doing it yeah you know you lose all sorts of moral high ground on that this so. is true this right. is true which which is why i'm officially on the show saying don't pick at them <laughs> just don't like he's I said, a better person yes because why well, and and i will admit i I've, I've i was tempted to fall into the you know show them how it feels crowd for a little bit but then it's like you know i thought about it talked with becky about it because she and i we talk about practically everything and you know 
just just you know leave it be. I mean, if you have your things to say about it, say your things about it, good or bad or whatever. But don't go pick it. You know that 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 just for one thing, it's a waste of money. Because once you're done picketing, what else is there to do in Wichita, or or wherever the hell it is? No, Topeka. I was thinking Wichita for some reason. <laughs> well, considering yeah. that's in Kansas, if say I was to go that low and do that, at least I could then hop over to Nebraska and visit one of my friends who lives there. Yeah, although you know it, it, it's although it's a couple of states away from Iowa, we could all go visit Holly. <laughs> Are you Holly's place? Yes. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, don't don't go and pick it. Don't toss your money at this. You know, you know, even if there was something more to do over there, don't do it because you know, be the better person. Uh, but uh, speaking of speaking of being the better person, this week uh, this is going to be the last Return of Kings thing we do, as I was mentioning earlier, for at least for a while, unless they do something extremely huge that needs to be addressed. Um, so so this week is kind of a follow-up to a couple of things we did last year. Um, last year we had a two, two uh, lists on how to tell if a woman is a slut. And, and we read those. The lulls were had. At least two-thirds of us were noticed. I don't know how they missed Holly. I don't know why. <laughs> but, um, but now, uh, this is from – actually, this article is about a month old, so you may have seen it. But it's called How to Be an Appropriate Slut. And I took one look at that as like, wait, you guys, you guys have at least two articles full of slut shaming and probably more. But then you're going to have an article about how to be an appropriate slut. So you're going to teach, you're, 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 you're going to, you're going to basically teach women how to be sluts and then shame them for it. Am I reading too much into that? Am I reading it wrong? No, I, I don't think so. Yeah. I think you're reading it right. <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> oh, so I get to pull out the voice again. Uh, so, <clears throat> and and by the way, this is not by the same guy who, who did the slut list. This is an article by somebody named Law Dogger, which, okay, you know, weird names all around, you know, no big deal. <clears throat> Recently, a female wrote to Christian and I, re inquiring about something that is often asked of men like ourselves. Let's call her Kim. The full text of the email is pasted for your reading enjoyment. And I'm not even going to try and do a voice for this unless either one of you two want to read it. <laughs> I'll read it. Okay. Dear Christian... Sorry. <laughs> Dear... Let's try that again. Dear Christian McQueen and Law Dogger, I thought about sending this to Roosh, but the form requirement of saying that I agree all most or most feminists are ugly seemed a bit petty. Thus, I am addressing it to the two of you since I am most familiar with your names from reading R.O.K. As a female and regular reader, I know women aren't supposed to be allowed, but it's way too fascinating to pass up. I frequently notice two different points being made, namely, one, Seek out hot girls who are DTF, and you don't. And if you don't close, move on. Two, a girl's value decreases as the number of guys she bangs increases. It follows that I have a question: What's a girl to do? The two hardly seem reconcilable. I'm sure you're very busy men, but if you get around to answering, I'd be interested in the information. Best, Kim. Yeah. By the way, for those who don't know, DTF is down to <laughs> just to kind of give a clarification and. And you know, inform DTF down to fuck, which, and and of course she's pointing out things that are pretty much site wide. Yeah, a girl's value decreases as the number of guys she bangs increases. What if? And and this is another thing because of the wording, I have to ask, what if she bangs a bunch of women but no guys? Does 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 that make her in in these guys' eyes? Does that make her value decrease? Or or wait, maybe it does because she's not banging dudes. Yeah, it's a catch twenty two. It's it's like you know all misogyny. You know you can't if you bang a bunch of guys, your value decreases. But if you bang a bunch of women, no big deal. Because mm -hmm. unless you bang them in front of a dude, then good point. It'd probably be okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, the answer 
is quite simple, actually, and while it may vary from guy to guy, I can at least provide a basic framework by which a girl can present herself in the most favorable light to a red pill, crossed out, man she desires. Let's address each of her perceived mutually exclusive points in turn. And you're fucking of me. <clears throat> The first prong of Kim's inquiry focuses on how fast a girl would have sex with a guy, a.k.a. the DTF level, and he clarifies DT fuck is down to fuck. DTF, DT fuck. <laughs> 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 well, why don't I just spoil it right there? Again. It's, it's good to know that fuck stands for fuck. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> it was so confusing. <laughs> This will be guy-dependent, as some guys can handle a girl who sleeps with them on the first meet, such as myself, and others automatically place them in a non-recoverable slut category. My advice? The first date. Yeah, and the guys... Uh, I'm, I'm just going to move on. This is going to build up a bit. This ties into the second prong, but if you fuck on the first date as opposed to the first meet, it gives most men the appearance that it was the guy rather than the circumstance that led to the fucking. With the same night bang, you could have just been horny, drunk, angry at an ex, who knows? A first date bang differs slightly, however. Define date. Because... <laughs> First of all, I love the voice that you're reading it in. <laughs> it's so <laughs> ridiculous. Um, well, the site is ridiculous. It, it, it calls for a ridiculous voice. <laughs> I know, but it's like, it's your, I'm supposedly an authority voice. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, uh, a lot of people meet on the first date. So... Uh, yeah, especially now... Uh, Especially now uh, with online dating and, and sites like OkCupid and all that. Yeah, right. It's like this guy hasn't heard of blind dates. Yeah, I mean, I mean, hell, look at look at me and Becky. We met in person for the first time at Magfest. Magfest kind of was our big first date and second date and third date and fourth date. If you <laughs> if you want to count like you know going back to our separate hotel rooms, you know, accounting as the end of a date, you know. Yeah. So it was like a base so. You know, we count that as like a whole big first date, and it's no secret we had sex during that time, and it was fine. No, no, you know, nothing was, nothing was changed. The world didn't explode. Magfest did not implode upon itself. Unfortunately, no orgies happened, but you know that that's that's just the thing. Well, I think uh, if an orgy had happened, the the con would have imploded upon itself. So maybe that's a good thing. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't even want to know what you'd catch at a con from an orgy. Like, no. con flu's bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I almost want to find out, but I don't know. Let's see. With the risk of catching some horrible STD out, you know, my 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 uh, um my fear of that outweigh the amount of sex that could be had. Uh, yeah. Actually, mine would, but because <laughs> yeah. because as much as I I would love to be a part of just a random orgy. The randomness factor is, is, is kind of off-putting. I would rather have an orgy with a bunch of my friends. At least yeah. then you know them, you know whether or not they're clean. And also, con flu is bad enough in and of itself. You don't want to add other things on top of it. Right. Oh. Okay, now I, I almost... Da, 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 da. Okay. There is no heat of the moment, at least in the beginning. You are letting this guy work on you, and in the end, if you fuck, it is more correlated to him, personally, than the situation. In other words, he won't feel like if he didn't hit on you at the bar, you would have just fucked the next guy with decent style and game. Well, if, if he feels like that, then he's got issues. Yep. Ah. Now let's say the first meet is at a bar. How are you going to act? Spend time with him. Be very interested. Maybe allow a quick fingering to get your jollies off if you're super horny. But do not, under any circumstances, go home with him and then not fuck him. Oh, well, you know what? What if what if they have that kind of arrangement? What if... Okay, this, this, this is a little too vague. No, don't you understand? All guys want is sex. So, <laughs> clearly... I don't even want sex all the time. <laughs> And, and, and I'm the resident horn wolfie here. I don't even want it all the time. But well, even you're just then, not a real man then, oh, clearly. Oh, oh, I'll show them a real man. Mm. <laughs> 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 and 
see, that's the th and that's the thing. You know, what, what, what was it? What was it? You know, go home and not fuck them. There could be extenuating circumstances. What if you go home, you think, okay, you maybe you want to, and he has explosive diarrhea. You know, that's gonna kill the mood a little bit. Yeah, be like, okay, maybe we should so. just watch a movie instead. Yeah. You know, you could just be tired. I mean, there have been plenty of times where, you know, I've been where my mind would be in the mood, but my body is like, no, fuck you, we're going to sleep. So it's like, you know, that doesn't... And then at that point, to quote George Carlin, you just think, well, at least me, let me dream about it. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what the bonus is? Odds are, if she's sleeping over there anyway, she'll be right there when you wake up. And if you, you both still want to go at it, you have the renewed energy, there you go. Morning sex. Boom! There you go. Problem solved. <laughs> uh, that is just selfish, as you are taking him out of the sea of fish with no reward. And nothing builds more resentment for a girl than having her on your bed and her not willing to have sex. Not really resentment. A little sexual frustration, maybe, but not resentment. You may think you are helping your cause by acting innocent, but he will secretly start hating you a little. Well, if, if his like, liking of you involves to how, how soon you would fuck him, then dude has issues. Mm-hmm. You know. On the flip side, never wait longer than the second date. In these times, you are replaceable. Because, you know, women are, you know, replaceable parts in a cotton gin. Uh, Right, and God forbid that you actually discuss sex before you have it and be like, hey, yeah. I don't want to do it this early. Yeah. Right, gonna... like, using me and my husband as an example, when he and I were first dating, I mean, granted, it was within the first month of us dating, but we had gone on quite a few dates beforehand before we actually, you know, did the frickin' of frack, as people on Tumblr like to say. <laughs> and I have no problem saying that my husband was who I had my sexual debut with. Hey, no problem there. And like a lot of people say, oh, how'd you wait until you were 19? I wasn't ready until I was 19. That's how. Yeah, some some people aren't ready until they're, until they're in their 20s. That's right. just the way, it, that's the way it happens. You know, there are some people now that are still virgins and they're in their 30s. You know. And there's nothing wrong with that. They... They're either asexual, so they have no desire for sex whatsoever. They're not ready. They could be demisexual, which means they have to have a strong romantic and personal connection with the person, and that's fine, too. Or they just plain aren't ready, or they really haven't found the right person that they would feel comfortable doing so with. Yeah. Or maybe they have, and they just have no way of getting to that person. You know, long-distance stuff too. kind of sucks, that's you know? Too, that's they're, they're... Too in my mind. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It, it's it's a lot of different different factors that can factor into it. So, you know, and 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 in, in the end, there is nothing wrong with it. If you're a virgin when you're forty, then fine. You're a virgin when you're forty. You know, I may think it's a little weird because my expectations have always been, you know, earlier. You know, you experiment a little earlier, but that's partially because of how I've been raised and even my own life experiences. But that doesn't invalidate anybody else's either. You know. Hey, you, all experiences vary from person to person. Yeah. Oh. For every girl that won't put out, another one will much quicker, and she will be younger and hotter than you. Unless you're in the MILFs, then they'll be older and hotter. Ah. Uh. And if you wait for the second date, the first date should have included a blowjob. You know, I don't expect a blowjob. I don't ex- Okay, I do not <coughs> expect a blowjob. Would it be nice? Sure. Do I expect it? No. Yeah, would I give a guy a blowjob on the first date? Uh, probably not. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it's a first date, I probably don't know somebody well enough to let them put their dick in my mouth. Yeah, because you never know what's on there. I mean, I mean, you, you can assume they've washed, but, you know, things get sweaty down there. Right, <laughs> Using me and my husband as an example again, our first date, the most we did was make out a little bit before going to see Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Yeah. And, and our first date was the day we became a couple, so go figure. <laughs> go yeah. figure, we're both huge nerds. We go see an awesome movie. There you go. Uh, I, I think, yeah, if, if, you, if you want to split up the days from MAGFest in terms of, of, of dates, then Becky and I waited till our second date. 
to, to, to become an official couple, but our first date, it was the uh, worst movie ever audition panel. And right after that, I tried dip kissing her in the middle of everybody. I failed. And we you both fell on our... Oh, uh, man. We... We we both kind of just fell, just boom, and we we weren't really embarrassed. We were just laughing, like, cause, cause that was just too silly, you know. I mean, obviously it it worked out for the best, but it's like, wow, I have not done this in a while. <laughs> oh, but you know, it was it was it's still a fun little thing. I mean, you know, it was maybe embarrassing for about five seconds, but then she was like, you know what, it's okay. I just I understand, and and blah 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 blah. We talked it out, kissed it out, and. We went on our way, and now we laugh about it. <laughs> That's the best thing to do about it. You laugh it off. Yes, especially if it's something relatively small. Yeah. So, um, now everything is not black and white, and these are not hardline rules. Really. The more traditional you are and make yourself out to be, the more likely it is you do not that you do not ding yourself in the eyes of the man for holding out longer. I've waited five to seven dates with Ukrainian and Russian girls before because some of them actually can compensate with real female qualities. Oh, and what are these female qualities that you speak of, sir? They cooked, cleaned, wore heels everywhere, and so on. Or if you look like this girl, most guys will happily wait a few extra dates. Which, perhaps... by the way, is totally photoshopped. <laughs> yeah. I looked at that photo. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, no. So, so, girls, if you look like you're photoshopped, then you're in with this dude. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> you know, maybe. Well... So, so, apparently, when I do my Amethyst cosplay at Chief Icon, since I will look photoshopped having purple skin. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Well then, we'll just have to keep your eye out for this guy, and and remind him that you are married. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, he'll respect that. I, I I will I might I might I have not seen any anything to the contrary, but if I was to give these guys any credit, they do seem so far to to not go for women who are married. From what I've seen, I could be wrong. I mean, that's yeah. one of those few credits I can give. Hopefully that you can give them. At least hopefully they respect the boundaries of somebody who's married and not interested in stuff on the side. Exactly. Uh, there are endless factor. Oh, yeah. Wait a few extra dates or perhaps give you terrific blowjobs. Uh, there are endless factors to consider, but for the typical American girl, which I'm guessing Kim represents, the date one is a good benchmark to use. And, and, and you know what? If you want to... If your first date wants to consist of fucking, then that's fine. Hi, I've been there. You know, and things have progressed from there. And if if all you have for each other is sex, then that's all you have. You know, unfortunately, and and that's, you know, it's nice to have more than one thing. You know, it's just gonna right. get dull. Yes, even sex can become dull, kids. Uh, all right, you're fucking of others. Oh boy. This is so incredibly simple, it boggles my mind every time a girl does not get it. Kim states that a girl's value decreases as the number of guys she bangs increases. This is a very true statement. Yeah, if you're a misogynist asshole. Mm -hmm. you know. But how does the guy know how many other guys you've banged? Well, only one way. You told him either directly or indirectly. You know? That's right, kids. This guy is implying that you should lie about how many people you've had sex with. Right. It, it makes me remember back to American Pie 2, where they had, like, the rule of three or, 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 or what have you. Like, a woman says, like, a girl says she's had sex with one guy. She's really had sex with three, that sort of thing. And then the reverse is true for guys. If he says he's had sex with three women, he's had sex with one or none, etc. Uh... And, and directly, recently, I slept with a girl who thought it was cool to talk about all her sexual exploits. She included such gems as she gets naked when she drinks tequila, then proceeds to tell me how much tequila she's been drinking the past few weeks. 
how she's been practic practicing her blowjob skills, about how wild she was in high school, about how she ended up in bed with her friend and another guy one night recently, how she slept with another guy quicker than I because she thought of me as potential boyfriend. Warning, never tell a guy you slept with another guy quicker. You know, if somebody were to tell me that, then I would be like, okay, so? You know, whatever. Most of this came after we had sex, and it quickly threw her out of the rotation. Oh yeah, another thing. He can have all of the fucking partners he wants, no pun intended, but she has to stay. But <laughs> I was gonna say something about that. Yeah, no pun All intended. Of the fucking partners he wants. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, uh, you know, the double standard comes in. Women can only have one partner at a time. If she has multiples, then she is should be shunned and be a whore and 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 all of that. So you know, fuck this guy. Mm, yeah. Only figuratively, though. Yes, please. We we don't you know and and, and insist on a condom. And other things to make sure his sperm do not reach your eggs. Exactly. Yes. As much as we already know how slutty girls are these days, we don't need to be given direct evidence of the same. Have some damn class. Well, you know what? Maybe she's just that friendly with you. Maybe she feels she can open up to you because she fucking trusts you. That she trusts you not to treat her like she's some whore because she had a few wild – some wild stuff in high school. That she's open with her sexuality. That she has a healthy sex life. But no, you went and you destroyed it by saying, oh, you were doing all of this stuff? Well, then fuck you. Get out of my bed, you whore. You, you, you just you, – yeah. You know, you could have had a good thing going, but no. You and your double standard self you, you pretty much cheated yourself out of who somebody who possibly could have been a good friend at the very least. Or maybe an actual relationship could have come out of it. But no, because because of your backwards ass ideals, you, you just kind of fucked yourself over. Again, no pun intended. Oh, yes. What the fuck, man? All right. Indirectly. Some girls accidentally, or maybe purposefully, hint at how slutty they are. This includes – oh, hey, mini slut list. Good. Uh, talking about how you are not like that anymore, having one or more condoms on you at any time, having a box of condoms by your bed, referencing – Right, kids. Again, I just got to say, being prepared is apparently bad for you. Yeah. I guess only the – Boy scouts can be prepared, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, referencing walks of shame. Yeah, because men never had the walk of shame. Uh, let's see. If you're if you're if you're at least my age, you have went to a video store and at least rented a porn. You know, be it VHS, DVD, whatever. And people would refer to that as the walk of shame. I admit I subscribed to that for a little while, but then I realized, you know what? Fuck it. If they don't if, – you know, I follow the rules like we had a movie gallery uh, in, in Chipley that's about 12 to 15 miles from where I am. And they had a little back room where they had you know, the porn and everything, and the rule stated you, know, you have to put it in a black bag to bring it up because you know, they don't want the kids to see it. And, and I think it's silly, but OK, you know, the rules are rules. But I, you know, after a while, I was like, I'm not ashamed of this. It's like, hi, you know, if I if it wasn't against the rules, I'd be like, yeah, uh, I'm I'm getting best of vivid girls number 372. Sure, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, but hey. And so for me, it's no longer a walk of shame. Oh, so yeah, discussing your friend's sexual promiscuity. That doesn't necessarily make her a slut. You know, it, it doesn't mean that she's going around and having a healthy sex life or banging everybody that she wants. Maybe she's just wanting to unload on you and say, you know, uh, my, my, <laughs> my girlfriend's doing this, 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 and I'm feeling a little left out because I'm not doing this, 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 for example. This one I'm actually genuinely confused about. Like, who does that? Yeah. Like, oh, this is how much sex my friend is having. Like, is, are those real conversations that people have? I know I've had them. Technic te technically, I guess I, me and my best friend, we talk about it with each other, but not really to other guys. Yeah. 
So I guess yeah. that kind of counts. Yeah. But that could just fall under, you know, normal girl talk as well. Yeah. I, I guess it depends on, on the dynamic you have with whoever you're talking to. Because well, I know she's I've... been my best. She's been my best friend since I was 11, so. Yeah. So, and, and I've, hell, I've discussed things like this with other friends of mine. And and, it, and for me, you know, on my part, it's never in a shaming way. It's like, you know, yeah, she's been with, like, this guy, this guy, this guy. And for me, it's always like, okay, that's an interesting fact. That's kind of neat. So, fielding texts and messages from other guys in front of us. Uh, these other guys, how do you know they're not brother, cousin, father, nephew, father. uncle? You know, it, it, it's it's close you know, family it's, friend. Yeah, guess what? Women can have male friends and not be sexual with them. Guess what? I'm doing a podcast with two women. I, you know, I don't see myself having sex with either of them. I'm not particularly interested, but. You know, we're still friends. So, you mm -hmm. know, hey, guess what? Boom! All of these are easily handled. Don't talk about your sexual past, even if he is dumb enough to ask. Oh, wow, he throws one barb at a guy. Because apparently it's stupid to ask about somebody's sexual past. Well, what if it's something that genuinely interests you? And you know what? Maybe maybe he has a right to know whether or not you're carrying something because you did something in your past that admittedly was stupid and you caught something. He has a right to know that. Right. You know, or or if or if, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it's not apparent at first, but maybe you have a kid that, that you know, you, you left at home. I mean, I would think that would probably one of the be one of the first things you discover. But if it's not, then hey, you know what? I have a kid. They're right there. You're technically, it's part of your sexual past because how do you think the kid came about? Nine times out of ten, right. it's, it's because of sex. Hmm. If you're mm -hmm. insistent on condoms and the guy doesn't have one with him, it's his fault. Put your damn phone away during the time you are with him. You know what? If if you're on your phone on a date, yeah, it's a little rude, but it depends on why you're on the phone. I mean, it. it I mean, if do you have an emergency, okay, sure. You know, and of course, if you're on the phone when you're on a date with a guy, then it it, it may not be going well because who knows? He he might just be a little boring, or maybe she has other things she has to take care of. You know, it is not just because oh no, you should not do anything with your phone or whatever. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with that one. <laughs> right, like Friday, me and my husband were out on a date because, you know, married couples can still go out on dates. Mm -hmm. And I was having to text with one of my friends to, you know, get arrangements set in stone of who was going to be my ride for going to the Welcome to Nightville show last night. Right. Which it was an awesome show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yes. Uh, I, I've I've heard that um, Welcome to Night Vale is an actual is a good show. Oh yeah, it is, and it's a free podcast. So if you like have some free time, you should definitely check it out. Whoop. Ah uh, yes. So I, I've heard good things about it. Ah. Uh, so all right. In summary, this just touches upon this one question regarding the speed of sex versus the history of partners. It does not touch upon an array of other important factors that may influence a man's decision to keep a girl around, i.e. personality. But that was not part of the question posed. It also assumes you are dealing with men like us, not beta guys who will be shocked at first date sex, care about your educational accomplishments, or seek out your sexual past because they think knowing is better. <sighs> wow. I, I hear that. Uh, go take it if you must. Uh -oh. Sexual okay, responsibility. So apparently he just, apparently it's he bad just described for you. Beta. Mm -hmm. And it's like he just described beta guys as how guys should actually act. Yeah. Yeah. See, see here. Like, I, I, could, I, I could see some guys actually being shocked at, you know, first date sex. Yeah. I typically and it's a, am because it doesn't happen. About it. Yeah. Right. But, but yeah, I mean, I've been shocked at first date sex. Hell, I've been shocked at first meet sex, even though we kind of it, – it's it's an interesting thing for me because 
at, at that particular point when it happened, you know, she and I had been discussing it, and we're like, okay, you know, I, I, I drive, I, I stop here if you want to come up, come up here, and all of that. And she got there, and 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 then of course the pessimistic part of me is like, okay, probably nothing's gonna end up happening. And then boom, it happened, and then I'm like, okay, I was proven wrong. I was delightfully surprised. <laughs> so you know, it can still happen. Especially, you could be pleasantly surprised when you don't expect it, and and that's the thing. The guys who are shocked at first date sex typically don't expect it. At least as far as as far as my experience goes. Am I any? What about what about you two? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, think, I don't think you should ever go into an expectation. Hard. I don't think you should ever go into something with the expectation that you're gonna have sex. Right. Like. First of all, you don't deserve sex from anyone. That's right. You know, no nobody owes you sex. But like, uh, it it just boggles my mind that it, they're so against sexual responsibility and you know caring about other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which makes it really easily for me to not take them as seriously. Hence. The funny voice, <laughs> among other things. Uh, what is the one thing that most girls instinctively say during a drunken one-night stand? I've never done this before. Okay. I- I- I've had one-night stands with-, with women before. One of them was... Eh, she wasn't drunk, too drunk to the point to where she couldn't consent, but she was tipsy. And she never said, I've never done this before. She was she was more the kind of dude, bed, dick, now. You know, she she wasn't the I've never done this before. Have, have the two have either of the two of you had had that kind of experience where where, you know, drunken one night stand, one of you says, I've never done this before. I don't recall having ever said it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Danny? I haven't I haven't either because like I said, I like I hate using the term, but I lost my virginity to the man who is now my husband. Mm-hmm. So and I wasn't old enough to drink at the time, so I wasn't drunk. If anything, I was on a tiny bit of a sugar high from having had too many sodas. <laughs> oh, well hey, you know. That to each his <clears> own <throat> there. Ah, sex on a sugar high. I may have tried it, I don't know. Ah. Now, even though that's complete bullshit, why do girls almost always say this? They don't, asshole. Because even subconsciously, they know that a slutty past is a disqualifier, and so this is a last-ditch attempt to preserve that chaste image. Okay. Number one, if it's if a slutty past is a disqualifier for you as a dude, then you know what? You're going to be missing out. Like I was saying when when uh, the, the woman he talked about earlier, you know, the, telling him all about her sexual exploits, you could be missing out on somebody who is who could be a great friend, a great partner, and you just can't get over the fact that, oh my god, she's banged other guys before. Not every woman you're going to run into is a virgin. And I hope he doesn't right. expect this. I really hope he doesn't. You know, in a realistic sense, he doesn't, you know? Because... Some men like to think of themselves as virgin slayers. Like, yeah, no. They really, really do. It's like, ah... Uh... One of my exes, I was, I was 25, I think, when we started dating. Mm-hmm. Or 24. And he had just assumed that I was a virgin and I was like why would you make that assumption like I I don't understand why it, that would be the first place that your head goes and it's just because that's what he wanted to think yeah I have not had sex with you therefore you are a virgin <laughs> yep when it's no no <laughs> yeah because like uh, a dick going into the, a vagina really changes a woman I know, right? I mean, if, if it's a very good experience, then yeah, there is some change from, okay, I'm scared, is this going to hurt, possibly, to, oh my god, this is enjoyable, I want more. That's you know. actually the experience I had. 
because there you, you go. Know, poor sex education. I thought it was going to hurt and that I was going to bleed. No, it was quite enjoyable. Yeah. So hey, <laughs> and that and that and that actually is a more positive change. It's like yeah, okay, I enjoy this. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Let's do this some more. Let's do it again. Come on. Uh, unfortunately, he's just five minutes after finishing, and some guys are slow to restart. Uh, but <laughs> most of the red pill men already red pill aware men already assume you are a huge slut. Wow. The well, last time I asked a girl how many guys she's been with was 2004, and there is a reason for that. There was always a tiny bubble of thought in our minds that, while overwhelmed with knowledge and experience to the contrary, still holds on to the ideal that some girls can be good girls. Define good. Men are the romantics, and we want to be proven wrong. That maybe, just maybe, you are different. I think you could use some extra punctuation in there. If you come right yeah. out and negate the scintilla of hope we have for today's females, it serves to only substantiate everything we have come to know. So to answer Kim's question, the two points are easily reconcilable. A girl can be relatively down to fuck, AK doesn't have to be fucking you in the bathroom stall of a club within 30 minutes, and at the same time not broadcast her sexual past, assuming, likely correctly, that she has an extensive one. It really is that simple. And that is the end of that article. This guy, the, the all these guys on this site, that's just... What what more can we say about these guys that, that that hasn't already been said or probably will be repeated at later times by different people? It's 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 their mindset boggles me. Boggles me even more because I look at my past self and I admit I, I've had my points in my life where I thought similarly, and I just want to smack the lot of them, including my past self. You know, I would like to think that if I get a really big headache, I would like to think that I somehow found a way to travel back in time and slap myself in the back of the head. That would that would be an awesome reason for you know really bad headaches. But these guys, you know, women and men, I think fundamentally, you know, and, and as we know them, women and men. I mean, there's there's also the intersex, the transsexuals, etc. Basically, people. Have have the ba basic common thing: we live, we eat, we shit, we die, and we fuck. And just because a woman fucks doesn't make her any less of a person, and just because a man doesn't fuck doesn't make him any less of a person. It's we're all people. If we want to go, if and you know what, if all three of us decided tomorrow, okay, you know what, we're going on a cross country tour, we're gonna fuck everybody we see. That would be fine, you know, as long as we could afford it, obviously. And mm -hmm. and of course, we don't really have an interest of doing that. I, I well, speaking for myself, I'm assuming for the two of you. No, I, I really don't. <laughs> yeah, so I'm assuming correctly. No real interest in that. Yeah. No real interest in that. Maybe traveling to try different regional foods, but that's just because I like doing that. But no cross country sex trip for me. There you go. See, yeah, oh, I'm I'm assuming correctly. <laughs> But in, and we don't want to, and that's okay. That that's totally fine. What you do with your sex life, whether whether you want to be as promiscuous as as a porn star on the screen, or and and keywords on the screen, or just be as prude and chaste as a nun, that's your decision. That's your call. And these guys on Return of Kings, they, you know, if they're 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 going to say things – forget about them. Seriously. We you know, we brought these up because – you know, I brought these to the table because, you know, A, make fun of them a little bit. Take the piss out of them a little bit. Take the wind out of their sails. Don't take them seriously because their brains are still back in some time where they think women have to be put on these pillars and, and not moved for anybody except for one man. And it has to be a man because I, I'm also – I'm going to take a look at the top five posts of the week, and number four is, and I quote, stop being such a fucking faggot. Yeah, they're homophobes too, apparently. Oh, lovely. 
Yeah. It is just god damn it. <laughs> oh, so we have about 15 minutes left. Uh, I think unless either of you two have some some things to add to the end of this article. Um do you all have anything or No, not really. <laughs> okay. Just that these guys need to stop being such douchebags. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So what I've what I've also been doing and trying to stall for a little bit of time, because I I admit I was a little less prepared. My my notes got a little corrupted. Um, I am going to go on the fall back on the thing and say, you know what? It is it is time for uh, you know, a BuzzFeed list. And to kind of keep with the theme a little bit, not slut shaming, but the kind of whole sex thing, um, I have found 13 tips for women having safe sex with other women. So it's it's more of you know more of a sexual education thing. And I'll be honest, whenever I hear about sex education, first thing I go to is heterosexual sex, and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in this. You're not. I. Being heterosexual myself, I tend to go straight to that as well. But then I like little thing in the back of my head goes, non-heterosexual people, remember them. Yeah. You know, and and you know what? That this article, this this BuzzFeed list, which by the way, I also heard that BuzzFeed also did the uh, the the list version of what the Nostalgia Chick and Nella and Mara Wilson did, uh, with like the old food from like the 80s or 90s or whatever, and if it ho- still holds up. <laughs> Although I will say, uh, watch their video; it's better. <laughs> you know, and and also gives me a reason to be really jealous of Nella. <clears throat> but I'm not spoiling it here. <laughs> okay, so 13 tips for women having safe sex with other women. And, and of course, at least in my sex ed, yes, surprisingly, I had sex ed in school. They didn't cover this. Gee, it was either Florida or Texas. Yeah. So number well, one. Sex ed in Kentucky ain't much better. Yeah. At least in Florida, I happened to manage it in a time where it was a little bit better. But I think it was between the time I graduated to about 2008 or 2009, so about seven or eight years, there was really a lack of comprehensive sex education. And then people realized that they were – and then and then the legislators were realizing that kids were drinking capfuls of bleach to try and, and – you know, get rid of a, get rid of a, a, a fertilized egg. Yeah. So yes. Uh, yes, actual true story. <laughs> All right. I so, think you and Omega covered that one before. Yeah, and I know I covered it like a long time ago on the uh, on the uh, classic Thespian Talk series, which I need to really get back up there. But anyway, the thirteen tips. Number one, seriously, take it seriously. Dr. Elizabeth Bosk said it best. Lesbian safer sex is not an oxymoron. Sexual health is important to everyone, regardless of your age, gender, or orientation. You know, they have dental dams. They have the gloves. You know, you know, get tested just like any other any other couple. Right. Yeah, I will say that about this list. It covers a lot of things that are applicable applicable to heterosexual sex as well. So. It seems sort of weird to me that this list is created under the guise of things that women need to remember about having safe sex with other women. Yeah, which – and like I said, it's – at least in my case, it's not something I always think of. It's like – not consciously at least. It's like in the back of my head, okay, just be safe or whatever, but what really does entail safe, you know? But uh, I mean – and and of course intellectually, I do know it is like the – like I say, back of the mind there. Number two, know that all sexual activities are not created equal. Some sexual acts require a bit more flexibility than others, sure, but we're actually talking about levels of risk when it comes to disease and infection. Activities that are considered to be lower risk include hugging, touching, massage, and masturbation. Many women consider sex with other women to be a low-risk activity, but many STDs are transferable between two women. You know, it's called cunnilingus, that the juices get in there. Right. That uh, that one I was like, I, I don't understand why this is like a thing that people don't get. 
Yeah. Number three. Remember, just because you're not having sex with men doesn't mean you're not having sex with men. It, it's some women who identify as gay or bisexual have also had sex with men at some point. So if you or your partner have had sex with a man, especially unprotected sex, your risk for certain STDs could be comparable to that of a heterosexual woman. Thankfully, most of the common STDs are totally treatable. It's like, okay, yeah. And number four, I, I, I touched on it earlier, dental dams. They do exist. Oh. Yep. Uh, fun fact, if you happen to have a condom laying around, perhaps from another time in your life or whatever, you can use that as a makeshift dental dam. <laughs> Which, yeah, it's pretty cool. Just make sure you put the right side up to your mouth. You don't want, you don't, you know, because you, you can get like those pre-lubed condoms. Don't put the lubed side up to your mouth. That, that's got to taste nasty. Ugh. Uh, never underestimate the importance of nail maintenance. Yeah, I can, I can see that. And and this is a thing that goes for everybody, dudes too. I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah. That 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 is. I was is... about to say that you beat me to it. <laughs> uh, and of course, courtesy, safety, blood, and everything. Speaking of hands, wash them before, after. Wash your hands as much as you can. Yeah, that, that's a good. That's just idea. a good life tip in general. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, that time of the month can increase the odds of transmitting various diseases. And for those who don't realize what I'm talking about, that time of the month, period. And yeah, you got you know you got the diseases passed through blood, and hey, what's coming out of there? Oh, a lot of blood. So yeah, that's another given. Sharing is caring, but not when it comes to toys. If you use sex toys or vibrators, clean them thoroughly before sharing. Alternatively, use a condom or don't share sex toys at all. Selfish? No, just way safer. I can agree. You know, it's not like the porn. I mean, get, think about it. Porn has the manipulative editing in it. Because odds are, if you see a, 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 a lesbian couple sharing a toy, I'm willing to bet that between takes, that thing was cleaned and sterilized. Or, or they have, they two have the exact multiples. Same one. Yeah. Multiples work too. You know, it, it it it's more of a thing. Now, if you see two people sharing a, a, a dildo or, or a vibrator or whatever without cleaning it first, I would say a one. Not only are you putting yourself at risk, two. I hope you really trust the person to not spread anything to you. You know, just saying. Uh, number nine. Sexual health isn't just about when you're getting it on. You should always know what's up down there. Yeah. Again, I, I think this is the I think you put it best. This is the list that applies to everybody, but they're just, you know, guising it as lesbians. Yeah. Yeah. GTTG, go to the gyno. Yeah, again, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something you should do anyway, whether or not you're having sex. Yeah. Of course, you know, we don't have the gynecologist as men go to, but, you know, we can still go to a doctor. Yeah. Right. When in doubt, stay calm and get tested. You know, naturally. Number 12, let's be honest. The best protection is having a frank and open conversation with your partner. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Number 13, most importantly, relax and have some fun. That's what sexy time is all about, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that, that, that list is kind of... Again, I was a little ill-prepared, so I just happened to see that list, and I was like, okay... You know, we're, we're talking about sex and women. Here you go. <laughs> and it's basically a list that tells you everything that you should already know if you had decent sex education. But unfortunately, in this country, that's not true in a good chunk of the area. Hello, Florida. Hello, Thank Texas. Yeah. Thank goodness we have Lacey Green and YouTube. Yes. Yes, and you know what? This actually is going to help segue to our uh, closing because I know this is going to take a little bit. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> speaking of Lacey Green, you can also find her videos on rtgomer.com as well as videos by myself, me, you know, articles by Misha Mayhem, videos by Writer's Block, Spaz Fox, and the like, and of course, Diamanda Hagen and the Omega, as, as well as if you want to look in, and I'm screwing up my end, 
but I'm going to keep charging on because the show must go on. My stuff can also be found on nerdvice.com. You can also find me on social media at gomer 21 X on Twitter and Tumblr. You can also find Nerdvice and RT Gomer Productions on Facebook. Go give them a like. Say hello. We are friendly. We will. We may even hug you. Thankfully, we are not Gorons. Uh, I've been on a Zelda kick lately. And if you want to toss money at us, you know, at these shows for better production values, because I'll, I'll be honest, the, the help is needed, and you know, we can always use some better equipment. If you want to toss money at the at the causes for better production values, better site, and everything, and then and keep in mind this is for my site rtgomer.com. Um, to to clarify, um, just go over to patreoncom slash gomer 21 X. Uh, Twenty dollars or more per month will get you ad space on my site. I think it's a very good deal, considering I've, I've done my shopping around and it's like, yeah, 20 bucks a month, that's cheap compared to what some of the stuff I've seen. Uh, so now that I'm done whoring myself out, um, Holly, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me a lot of places on the internet, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, uh, as GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. Uh, you can find my Facebook fan page. Um, my Etsy store is also GookyGox and uh, Nerdvice. Yes. Uh, so, because you are you are an official part of Nerdvice, you're you're one of the the admin people. Yes, and I, I, am. I think you're like head editor. I think. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> ah. So, and Danny, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Danny Amigurumi, and I'm going to spell that out again just because it's a big complicated word. It's D A N N I E A M I G U R U M I. And you can find me on Tumblr at oyarnit, and you can also find me on Blogspot there. Sweet. And I think that's about it. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. I have, I do have like some other patterns that I've posted up there. They're mostly just uh, various different DS cases. Oh sweet. Uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on one right now for 3DS XL that'll uh, hopefully when I'm done with it look like the big gray Totoro. Nice. Very nice. Oh, so again, I, I do want to give out one one special shout out, and because I think her artwork is great, and you guys should go toss money at her for it. Uh, my girlfriend Becky, she does have her own Patreon page where you can get commissions from her, um, and that is Patreon.com/slash Becky Hop. You go go toss money at her, get some great artwork. You want to see a good example of her artwork? Go look at my Pokemon Quartz uh, playthrough. That's her artwork on the title on the cover art there she does a great job go toss money at her do it she do has it. an adorable art style i adore becky's art it's so cute it is it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> that that was cute yes it is <laughs> <laughs> oh see 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 she causes the cute out of me even when she's not here <laughs> oh so Anyways, it, it's a little bit shorter show, but we're, we're, we've are we're we got to get out of here for this week. We will catch you next week where we will have somebody else sitting in. I'm not going to spoil who it is, but this person knows who they are. Um, and and Danny, thank you for, for being here with us this week. As always, no it is problem. a pleasure. I'm glad. Well, pleasure being here, and I'm glad you had me back. Yes, and, um, and you guys out there, write into the show and, and tell us what you think. You think... She's doing it. Do you think she did a good job? You think, you know, you want to see or hear more of her? Let us know. Um, rtcomerprod at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. Or, you know, tag me on Tumblr or Twitter or whatever. Just let us know, please. We need the feedback. <laughs> oh, so, again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Danny Amigurumi signing off. Bye. Bye, guys. Constructive Deconstruction is an R.T. Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.